Good morning. It is the 21st of June, and this morning as we gather in Canada, it is our National Indigenous Day of Prayer, and so we join together with our siblings of all nations in this country in prayer and in praise and in hope that together we can build a brighter future. Let us pray. Christ, our true and only light, receive our prayers and songs and illumine the secrets of our hearts with your healing goodness that no evil desires may possess us who are made new in the light of your heavenly grace. Amen. Creator, we give you thanks for all you are and all you bring to us for our visit within your creation. In Jesus, you place the gospel in the center of this sacred circle through which all of creation is related. You show us the way to live a generous and compassionate life. Give us your strength to live together with respect and commitment as we grow in your spirit. For you are God, now and forever. Amen. And the collect for today, Creator God, from you, Every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love, and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people journeying together in partnership may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full statue of Christ, who is our light and our life. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 40, verse 25 to 31. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And now... We join together in saying the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what is right, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for mercy shall be shown to them. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted in the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. A reading from Philippians 
chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What incredible words from the prophet. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Words, words that have been the source of incredible Christian hymns hymns that have made hearts soar and lifted spirits. But let's, let's today, let's just for the heck of it, take a look at what these words really mean. And, and to do that, we have to understand that for the first 39 chapters, the first 39 chapters in, in the book of Isaiah, the prophet spends his time mostly yelling at, berating, challenging the people who have been living without justice, people who have been living in a way that has been punitive to the widows and the orphans and the marginalized. He has punished them and berated them for turning Israel into a gated community where a few have everything and the majority have nothing. Time and time and time again in those first 39 chapters, the prophet has said to them, if you continue to abuse one another, if you continue to deny justice, if you continue to live without righteousness, if you continue to break the covenant the Torah covenant that you made with God in the Sinai where you promised that you would love God, love one another. If you continue to do that, the consequences will be disastrous. If you continue to do that, Jerusalem will be destroyed. If you continue to do that, your nation will be destroyed and it will be on you. Okay, so chapter 40 begins, the chapter that our passage today is from. And, and at this point, the city has been destroyed. The temple has been destroyed. The people have been taken into captivity and they have been living in exile in Babylon for a long time. They have lost their homes, their way of life, their freedom, their temple, their hope, and for many of them, they have lost their faith. They have lost their faith that Yahweh, their God, even hears them. Or if their God hears them, they have lost the faith that he has the ability to do anything about it. And so, and so Isaiah comes to the people in the first part of chapter 40, the part we didn't hear today, and, and he says these words to them. Listen to these words. He says, comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her. Listen to this. She has served her term. Her penalty has been paid. They're going home. They're going home. And, and then those glorious words in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God, Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low, 
the uneven ground level, the rough places of plain, and the glory of the Lord is going to be revealed as you make your way back to Jerusalem. And, and surely, the, surely the people said, that is exciting. That's amazing. Hallelujah. We're going home. Call Uber. We are out of here. Well, not exactly. It took the prophet. 15 more chapters and many more months and years to convince the people, to convince the people who had lost their trust in Yahweh that Yahweh cared and could help. It took 15 chapters and many more months and years to convince those who had become accommodated to life in Babylon and for some actually were benefiting from life in Babylon, to try to get them to imagine life away from Babylon, life away from the imperial forces of domination, life that was about real freedom, real purpose, real hope. And it took another 15 chapters, another many months and years, to convince those who had been born in Babylon, second generation, those who only knew Babylon, that there was reason to trust the God of their ancestors to find happiness, possibility, freedom, and new life. That's the context for our reading today. And, and so listen, listen to what, to what is being said here. In, in captivity in Babylon, which was a society that was committed to astrology and astronomy and astral worship, the prophet says, points to the skies and says, lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. It was my God. It was your God. It was our God who created those stars and puts them in order. Our God, your God, is more powerful than any other gods, more powerful than the Babylonian gods, even Marduk. You said, our God has forgotten about us. Our God isn't strong enough to help us. But our God does not grow faint or weary, and his understanding is unsearchable. He has not forgotten. In fact, our God your God is the one who gives strength to those who are faint and weary. And then he goes on to say those wonderful words. For those who wait for the Lord, those who trust in the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. He is not talking about them flying around Babylon. He is not talking about them joining a Babylonian health club. He's not talking about them going out for walks in the streets of Babylon. He's talking about them going home to build a new Jerusalem to build a new future so the glory of God can be revealed and God's world can be healed. Okay, okay. Today is our National Indigenous Day of Prayer. And I believe that on this day, the prophet is speaking to us. I believe the prophet is speaking to our country and to our broken world. Because I believe that we live in Babylon. Oh, we were born in Babylon. And, and for those of us of European ancestry, white skin, for the most part, we have accommodated to life in Babylon, and many of us, we have benefited from it. But there are many, many, many in our country who are simply victims of what brought us here. For our day, I believe, 
I believe that Babylon is economic systems which oppress and punish and put down any who get in the way. I, I believe that Babylon is political and cultural systems that suppress and deny the basic human rights to people of different cultures, different colors, and different races. And I believe, no, I know, that Babylon is the appalling legacy that we have of the doctrine of discovery. A fifth century papal bull that European monarchs used to justify taking land from indigenous persons in Asia, in Africa, in Australia, and the Americas, and yes, that includes Canada. It was a doctrine that said that if land was not inhabited by white Christians, it was uninhabited land and free for the taking. And, and what that meant, it, it essentially said that indigenous people were non-humans and that created a political and religious imprimatur to discriminate to marginalize, to colonize, and to subjugate the majority of God's children. We are in Babylon. We are in Babylon. But I believe that today, if we listen, if we listen, I believe the prophet is calling us, begging us to imagine life beyond Babylon, to imagine life beyond systems that have pitted people of different colors and different cultures and different customs and different traditions against one another. I believe the prophet is calling us to imagine life beyond Babylon, beyond a place where people need to struggle for recognition and, and respect and justice. I believe Isaiah is calling us to imagine life beyond Babylon, to imagine life beyond discouragement and despair, life beyond mistrust and judgment. And, and I know that there are many, there are many in our world today who, who believe that to imagine, to dream, to even live hopefully in such a world is a waste of time. The wounds are too deep and the damage is beyond repair. But listen, listen again to the words of Isaiah. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will be faint and weary and the young will be exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. They will find the courage to leave Babylon behind. My people, my friends, we need desperately, at this point in our history, we need desperately today to commit to work together, to commit to listen to one another, to really listen to one another in dialogue, not monologue. We need to commit to respect one another, to respect the differences in color, in culture, in custom, in religion. And not just to respect, but to celebrate those differences. We need to commit to work together to build a new Jerusalem, to build a new temple where the glory of God will shine in the darkness of the world and where men and women and children from all nations and all races will know 
that they are one family, loved by one God, building hope and possibility and new life and justice for all. Let God's people say, Amen. Together we say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. 
Let us pray. Creator and Redeemer, as we approach you in prayer, make us walk in beauty and balance. Make us open our hearts and minds. Make us speak the truth. We pray first for your community, the Church, the body of Christ. We pray for all our relatives in the circle of life throughout all creation, for those chosen to be our leaders and teachers. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. We call upon the earth, our mother and home, with its beautiful depths, soaring heights and deep waters, its vitality and abundance of life. And together we ask that it teach us and show us the way. We call upon the mountains and tundra, the high green valleys and prairies filled with wildflowers, the snows, the summits of intense silence, and we ask that they teach us and show us the way. We call upon the land which grows our food, the nurturing soil, the fertile fields, the abundant gardens and orchards, and we ask that they teach us and show us the way. We call upon the forests, the great trees reaching strongly to the sky with earth in their roots and the heavens in their branches, the fir and the pine, the cedar and the maple. We ask them to teach us and show us the way. We call upon the creatures of the fields and forests and the waters, our brothers and sisters, the wolves and deer, the eagle and bear, the great whales and the fish. We ask them to teach us and show us the way. We call upon all those who have lived on this earth, our ancestors and our friends, who dreamed the best for future generations, and upon those whose lives our lives are built. And with thanksgiving, we call upon them to teach us and show us the way. Creator, you made the world and declared it to be good. The beauty of the trees, the softness of the air, the fragrance of the grass speaks to us. The summit of the mountains, the thunder of the sky, the rhythm of the waters speak to us. The faintness of the stars, the freshness of the morning, the dewdrops on the flowers speak to us. But above all, our heart soars. For you speak to us in Jesus the Christ, in whose name we offer these prayers. Amen. And now joining our prayers and praises together, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts your minds and the knowledge, the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those 
whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.